everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right. So tonight I wanted to do uh, a class on triggers because that is part of self-awareness. And for me, our triggers are our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our behaviors, and our actions, and our physical well-being. Because I've learned over the years of being a caregiver that our feelings and our emotions are not the same thing. And that was one thing that I had to really, really digest and learn how they each work together. Now, self-awareness, again, I'll say is a, our foundation to our mental health and each room representing comfort zones as we found out from the last class. Okay, so to me, the triggers are like signals that alert us to step out of the room Okay, challenge us to explore our uncharted areas of our house. As you can see, we're talking about our potential. So each trigger we encounter when navigated with self-awareness will strengthen our foundation, allowing us to expand our living space. That's how we grow when we renovate. And we can discover hidden chambers of our potential, which we're talking about is our true potential. All right, slide number two. Now, self-awareness is the foundation. So tonight I wanted to get us into discover and reinforce your core self, identifying personal triggers to lay a strong mental foundation for growth. And of course, we're using the air cycle blueprint. That is to adapt. We want to recognize and accept the presence of triggers in our mental house. Working on that now, we work on that daily. Use self-awareness to adapt your emotional and behavioral responses, seeing triggers as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles. Doing the inner work, we want to engage in deep self-reflection to understand the origins and impacts of these triggers. This involves exploring the rooms of your mental house, examining the feelings, thoughts, actions, behaviors, all of the things they invoke and working on transforming these insights into resilience. We got to build it and build it and keep it strong, that foundation, that structure. Consistently, which is the repeat, applying the insights gained from, the, from this inner work to manage your triggers effectively. This repetition solidifies the strategies within the mental house's structure making its foundation, which is, of course, self-awareness, stronger and more resilient. There are so many components into self-awareness. So that is the keystone of the blueprint. That is how we are going to figure out our strategies once we go over the actual triggers, which are here. Now, here are the triggers. That's where I was saying, you guys, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and, oops, I'm sorry. Did I flip out of that one? Yes, I did. There it is. Okay, into the triggers. Now, I wanted to go ahead and just share a story about the triggers for me. Now, as being a caregiver, I have, to just today, I was looking at this list of each of the triggers. You have your emotional triggers. You have your social triggers. You have your environmental triggers, your personal triggers, and your physical triggers. And these are just some of the ones that I could think of that I have been experiencing myself. You may have more to add to each of these lists. And so today I was thinking of my to myself, okay, which one of these triggers have I been experiencing today? And from the emotional triggers, today was a uh, feeling, well, not today, but throughout this whole time, because I am my grandfather's, that is my grandfather. He's not my dad, my my dad, he is my mother's dad, my, my biological mom's dad. So I am his granddaughter, but he has made me power of attorney. So I was feeling judged and in quiet and just feeling the criticism from my mother being that she's her, his oldest and she's trying to figure out why it's me instead of her. So it's like, I was feeling that. Then if you move on down to the social triggers, I was like, well, where was I feeling that? Because of the conflict, the arguments and the disagreements that were going on. Then if you go down to the environmental triggers, I was just feeling really the, the, the loudness. I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a, 
I would say I'm a pretty calm person and I'm not a, a loud person unless I'm having fun or something. But as far as like yelling, I don't do that. So that was that was a trigger for me. Then if you go down to the personal triggers, I was like, yeah, strained relationships, those family issues that came up today too. So then the physical trigger was, of course, the sensory overload. I just the anxiety of just being in those situations. So these are the triggers that we are experiencing every day. And I was thinking of how these triggers relate to our house, our mental house in a way. So if you go to the emotional triggers, these are like the weather conditions, okay? So they can shatter your windows. They can mess up your doors. It's the insulation falling out the cracks in the house. Now, if we go down to the social triggers, I would say they're like they're like the dynamics of of your house. They're more like the the neighborhood, the outside. How are you comparing yourself to the to the Joneses? Are you doing that? Are you living in peer pressure? Um, how is your conflict with people? This how, do you get triggered immediately by that? Like being in the hospital and having all of the relatives in there when a doctor or something would come in because I am the point of contact when they talk to and everybody's asking the every, the nurses everything and I'm like don't y'all are y'all are making him upset because everybody's trying to know everything but we and me and him understand that it's me talking to the nurses so it was like I had to really control the, the that urge to want to be in conflict with them in that that arena just by bursting out. So it's always come down to adapt, really do that inner work and, and really let myself know they don't really understand everything. So I I need to be more, I need to be the, the, the responsible one, the adult one in the, in the room. Now I wanted to go over the triggers and I wanted to ask for just for a little interactive in the chat, if you want to um, go ahead and tell me, have you experienced any of these triggers today? Any of the triggers today, so you have criticism, feeling judged or inadequate, rejection, feeling unwanted or not valued, exclusion, feeling left out or ignored, failure, the fear of not meeting expectations, loss of control, feeling hopeless or powerless. Then you move down to the social triggers. And like I said, these are just some of the ones that I came up with my own, on my own. Okay, let me see what we got here. Several of them. Time pressure. Yes, that is a big one. Time pressure. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me flip that back for you guys. Loud noise. The environmentals. The large groups are busy places. Deadlines are feeling rushed. Clutter. Messy or disorganized. Like that's a... That's a big one for me. I have like organized chaos. <laughs> it's what I like to call it. Conflict. Fear, fear of not. Yes. Yes. Now the health, the health triggers. Now, when I was going through and I was thinking about the personal triggers that we go through, um, we all go through all of them. And it's in it, if we think about how it relates to an air cycle, we go through air cycles numerous times of the day. Yes, I see Dr. Tomoshi has her hand raised. Yes, ma'am. Um, just to be really transparent in this moment, it is so interesting and apropos that this is what we're discussing. Someone had friended me, sent a friend request to me on Facebook and they had my biological father's last name. Then they had done this before and then they rescinded their message. So I was like, okay, who good. I don't want to deal with it. But anyway, today they refriended me again and they my they have my biological father's last name. So I asked them, listen, are you related to me? You know? And they said yes. And I said, how? Because my biological father made children outside the marriage. So this person could have been my brother. And I told him that I was not in the mood today to have a brother, another sibling. Mm -hmm. That's you true. know what I mean. Yes. And so I so finding out he was my second cousin literally took a pressure off of me 
because even though my father is deceased now, I didn't want to have to tell my mama, oh, we found another one, right? right. I didn't want to have to call my other siblings, the ones that I know of and say, oh, we found another one. I could not receive a brother today. And I told him that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I had very many triggers. The environmental, um, yes. Leading yes. to that phone call today, which ended up being pleasant and fun. So Damn. I just want to be transparent. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. And the environmental triggers, they, they can be like the wear and tear on our house. So they they're 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 like the broken steps outside. You got the the your your shingling your what you call it? your shingle things are falling off the side of your house. Your roof got a hole in it, right? So then we move on to the personal triggers, and those to me are like the plumbing issues in your house. So you gotta find you gotta find your leak in in your house. If you if you if you feeling some of these these you gotta find where it is. How can you heal it? Like you said, it turned out to be pleasant. So I think sometimes we make things out to be so much worse than they are. They, we, we just be overthinking it. So sensory overload, that was, that, that has been a big thing to me. I've been learning about myself as I do get overstimulated to uh, anxiety and stress. Sometimes it's to mute to loud noises the touch, unwanted contact, sparking discomfort or tragic or traumatic moments, pain, physical discomfort, leading to emotional distress or irritability, extreme tiredness, that fatigue, tiredness, heightening sensitivity to stress and mood changes. Now, when we go and we talk about the physical triggers, that sensory overload, though that feels like electrical to me. That's that's what I think about when I think about about the physical. It, it like it sends you you should be feeling everything that you're thinking about in your in your body somewhere, some shape or form. Because like I, I like to tell everybody that sugar when you eat it, it go to your knees. So watch out, watch out there now, okay? Watch out there now when you eating that sugar. <laughs> all right, so now I want to take you all to. The air cycle. I just wanted to explain because, of course, this is part of my air method program and it incorporates the air method. So, understanding our triggers, it lays the groundwork for effective personal growth. This brings us to the air cycle blueprint, a three step process that helps us not just cope with but thrive amidst life's challenges. And these are, this is how I came up with the, the strategies that I'm going to share with you for the um, triggers that we're discussing. Okay. Uh, I thought yeah. someone had their hand raised. Did, they, did, did someone? You your hand? I'm sorry. You, I, I did. Um, Go ahead. This is Jamie. Um, yes. Ms. Um, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your Angela. name. Angela. Angela, when you were talking about the uh, over, overwhelmed, um, it took me a long time to recognize that I was not angry, that I was just overwhelmed and that um, my family was expecting from me more than I had to give at that time. And then, um, but I must say it was like, it was so foreign to make, you know, it took a lot to make that connection, but sometimes our emotions can be, we misread them or we're so critical of ourselves because we really don't know what's going on. Yes. And that's that's why I, I say that your self-awareness is your foundation, because without all of these things, you you really are just going like this in life. You're not really grounded. You're really not grounded. And it goes it goes right back into how we can leverage our self-awareness to embrace the ebbs and flows of life. So adaptation is about the fluidity and flexibility of course, like a muscle, we need to keep moving it in order for the atrophy not to set in. Adjusting our mental house to withstand the weather of our triggers. The inner work, where we dive deep into the core of our mental house. Con could we continuously explore and strengthen our resilience? I see Dr. Eric. Yes, sir. This is so good, Miss Angel. Oh my God, it's it's just so powerful as always. GSU, there's no place like GSU. I'm telling you. Um, but today, like at work, our power went out four times, so all the power went. Out. So I was telling my manager, you know, of course we got to do what we do, and so 
we had our scheduling department calling and I said, I've already explained this. Um, there's no need to call. The manager's already sent out messages because one of the providers, she's real old school. I've known her week 25 years and she's called her power went out at home. So she's doing videos from home. So she's calling because she, of course, she's old school. I was like, okay, they don't need to keep calling because there's nothing we can do because our power's out. So even when it came back, I said to the young lady scheduling, you know, we, we're working on it. They've already sent out a message letting the patients know. So then somebody else calls. So one of the new girls I'm training, she answered, I said, put them on hold. Because at this point now, I'm starting to get like, okay, y'all don't have to keep calling. We've already relayed this. They've already sent the message in there to their my chart. We've already are on with the provider. So you don't have to keep calling. So I told my manager, now listen, <laughs> don't call back. We power one out. There's nothing you can do but wait and try to resolve the issue. So this is really good because then I told my manager and I'll leave with this. I said, now I just came through all these customer service classes, right? I'm about to get a certificate back. If one more person called with the same information and I've explained it very thorough to them, there's nothing you can do. The power keeps going in and out. There's nothing you can do but wait to resolve the issue. Period. So this is really so, I mean, this is just really good because then I had to kind of, you know, I'm trying to train this new girl and I was like, you know, but they already know. Don't call back because at this point, you know, my manager already knows. So thank you for this information. <laughs> Dr. Tomoji, I see you. Sure. So when Jamie was speaking and she talked about learning her emotions, she said this exact phrase. She said, I'm not angry. I'm overwhelmed. I actually have a book and I don't know if you can read that or if you can see that, but that's exactly what it says in that bottom line. Oh, I see it. Yes, I am not. I'm not angry. Overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. That's and awesome. so when I wrote this book, I was working on a college campus where I was over a men's mentoring program and they kept bringing me, especially black men on the campus telling us they're angry, they're angry, they're angry. Angry is not a primary emotion. It's a secondary emotion. It's always pr produced from something else. Mm -hmm. And so helping practitioners enlarge in their emotional vocabulary. So when she said that, I had to go get the book. So um, Jamie, if you give me your address, I'll mail you a free copy of the book. Yay. Yay. And I, I learned about anger, too, because I, I read in one of Oprah's books, uh, magazines, and it's on my vision board in the room. It says that frustration is if you you're when you're frustrated, that will turn into anger. And that that helped me so much just by knowing that that inner work right there. Like I said, it, it's it goes deep. It goes deep to the core. And you really have to really do that deep inner work to. To heal, we if we going if we really gonna talk about healing, we really gotta be about it. So that means we gotta explore and strengthen our resilience. And this is where we renovate and fortify our internal structures. So lastly, we repeat. This means applying our gained insights consistently, like we have, like learning that we're not angry, we just overwhelmed. And it can feel like anger. It's like we gotta learn those thoughts. OK, we, we know that the thoughts is going to stem into a feeling and that feeling is going to make it an emotion. So we got to understand the feeling so that we know which emotion is coming out and how to adjust us so that we do have the right emotion for the next thought that comes about. I tell you, life be who it's. I, but you know what? I love learning about all of this, this this personal growth. This is one of my love languages is just personal growth. So this means that we navigate and neutralize our triggers and we ensure our mental health remains robust and resilient through time. Now, as we've talked about it, so, and I asked you guys just to think about times where you felt triggered, okay? And then what happened and how did it affect you? And then this is how we get into our strategy for to get our development. And let me pull up that slide for you all. Okay, so I like to call this the renovating of your mental house. So first we have the emotional triggers. All right, so we're weatherproofing the emotional framework. So I came up with the strategies for each 
of the ones that I have been personally working on, which I know there's probably so many triggers within each of these categories, but these are the ones that I've liked that I have worked on and I have really came to understand and can recognize it within myself and can detour myself into a more positive outlook than going south. So you have the criticism. You can develop a feedback filter to distinguish constructive criticism from negativity. As we all know, repetition is the key to mental ownership. I feel that the more we hear stuff, the more it really will sink in. So use it as growth opportunity rather than a personal affront. Just, just know that that person in their own way is trying to help you. Um, Amanda Seals did a live and she said, perception is your own reality. And when she said that, I just had to step back and think, because if we really do think about it, our own perception, it is our reality, even our perspectives of other people. That's our reality of what that person is thinking at that moment and doing. So the rejection, build resilience by reflecting on past successes and maintaining a positive self view. Understand that rejection is often not about personal failure, but situational factors. And that right there, situational factors, we must know that we are enough, we are worthy. One of the things that my word of the year is enough. So knowing that situational factors happen that could lead to what you fail about is never a failure. It's always just a lesson. You have exclusion, foster a strong support network outside of current event environments to reduce the impact of feeling left out. Engage in self-affirming activities. And that's what we, when we go out and we see our fellow GSU members and we attend networking events, that's what we're doing. We are working on our positive relationships, one of the resilience flow. Failure, adopt a growth mindset, viewing failure as a learning opportunity and stepping stone to success. Analyze what went wrong to improve future efforts. And that's always one of the things that I do, whether I'm in a conversation or whether I'm in a session with somebody or I was helping my, one of the, my clients that are um, I found through my YouTube. And she is just in between which steps she wants to take. And I'm like, okay, so I want you to think, what did you do wrong when you went down to your yoga instructor and you did all of that and you started doing your classes and stuff and then you just fell off what what do you think went wrong there so it's just like an analyzing what went wrong so that you can improve on it loss of control practice mindfulness and stress reduction techniques to stay calm and focused prioritize tasks to regain a sense of control and that was base it is basically my life these days is just with all the family that wants to come and they they want to be in the in the they want to help and hear what the doctor's saying and, and offer their advice but nobody is there every day doing it and it's it's me stamp okay let me prior to prioritize so i i know what is the main thing right here him staying calm him being all right I know what's going on. The nurses know who I am. They know I'm the point of contact, but it's nice to see how they react to them also. So it was, it was like, they were helping me stay calm, which I, I, I very, I welcome that. So now we go to our social triggers, upgrading the neighborhood dynamics. That's what our social triggers are. I like to call them like our fences. Uh, the strategy for social comparison. Focus on personal goals and achievements rather than comparing with others. Celebrate own successes and define success on personal terms. And I am working on celebrating myself. So I don't, I'm not a comparer, but I, I noticed I don't, I'm not a big celebrator. I just move on to the next thing. Peer pressure, strengthen personal values and beliefs to resist conforming to others' expectations. Practice assertiveness in stating personal choices. And one of the things that I have been working on as far as my personal values is to speak up more about how, not how, how 
I want to actually figure out my my signature story. And like like we all know, we got to trust that process. And I know it's not yet, but I think I have the right one. So I think once we ready to, that'll be ready to share it when she is like, where's your story? Because <laughs> I know she's going to ask me. I, I feel it in my bones. Conflict. <laughs> Use effective communication strategies and conflict resolution skills to address disagreements constructively. Seek to understand before being understood. And that was to that was um when my mom and my uncle were in the room and I was trying to explain to them because he right now he's having some bladder issues and it, he's like having bladder spasms. And when I tell you it's painful to him, it's painful. So everybody's watching him have one and they're all like, well, can we get the medicine, get the medicine, get the medicine. And I'm, and I'm calming everybody down and I'm like, well, you know, there's a process to it. The nurse has to tell, write it in the chart, da, da, da. Then it has to go to the doctor, da, da, da. Then it has to go, the doctor has to write the prescript. Then the prescript has to go to the pharmacist once it gets in, then the pharmacist. So I'm, I'm explaining to them and, and I'm, it, it was being assertive that I was doing that and the, the nurse was like oh my gosh thank you so much she was like you know what she was like you're so good at this and I was like well because you you have to being being a communicator is is one of the main main things in being a caregiver you have to learn how to calmly talk to people and really not dumb it down but explain things Isolation, proactively seek social interactions and community involvement. Use technology to connect with others if physical presence is challenging. And working on that for me is, <laughs> I have, that's one of the things that I, I've been working on is, is being, connecting more, actually sending out text message because I will, I will isolate myself. And now I say solitude instead of isolate. Because I like solitude is more positive and it means I'm what I'm doing is actually personal getting my personal growth on, working on my self-improvement and my personal development. Environmental triggers, let's get into those. Refurbishing the external environment. That's the outside of your house. Make sure that's good. The noise. Use noise canceling headphones. I've seen a lot of people using those or seek quieter environments when needing to concentrate. Introduce soothing background sounds to counteract noise. I do that when I need, when I'm working on anything. I will have something in the background as far as like, I don't know. For me, I will play a show that I've watched over and over and over again, just so that it's in the background for me. Music, I get too focused and I just be, if I put on a show, it's easier. Crowds, plan visits during off-peak times to avoid large groups or find less crowded alternatives. Practice grounding techniques if you're feeling overwhelmed. And those grounding techniques can be anything from, sometimes I have to, I just rub on the tops of my legs. I do that about 10 times and I'm, I'm all right. I, I, I make, or I'll plant my feet. If I'm sitting like without my feet being planted, I'll just plant them on the ground flat and I'll just sit there and take a couple of breaths. Move on to time pressure. Somebody said something about time pressure. Improve time management skills and set realistic deadlines. Break tasks into smaller manageable segments to reduce, to reduce stress. And that is one of the things that I learned first off as being a caregiver to my son who has cerebral palsy is time management because he would have doctor's appointments and one would have one. And I was like, okay, I can schedule them all at one time. I can, and I can even break up the tasks that I need to go by prioritize them by what needs to be done first, instead of trying to do everything at one time, this can be done this week. This can be done this week. This doesn't have, so time pressure is one of them, but Trust me, if you're that's what you struggle with, you will get the hang of it if you just keep working on it. And you really think about setting the realistic deadlines. Deadlines for me has helped so much and breaking the tasks into smaller ones. Clutter. Now that's that's a 
that's a sore, that's a down error for me. Organize personal and workspaces to reduce clutter. Adopt a minimalist approach to belongings and workspace setup. Now, the clutter is not in my office. The clutter is in my bedroom. So that goes to show where my, my mental is cluttered at. If we think about it, if you think about where in your house it is cluttered at and you think about a room in your house, think about which room you relate that cluttered spot to and that's where you need to work on. And you'll be like, oh my God. For me, it's it's that relationship child look. But we don't, <laughs> marriages are hard. That's where we get to personal triggers, which is like restoring the internal structure. Okay, you got your health concerns. Be proactive. Get your regular checkups. We all know that. The financial stresses. Create budgets. Seek advice, which I'm doing now for, for like getting all of my uh, hospital bills together and how to do that. So seek financial aid to alleviate, alleviate the stress and gain control. The family issues, oh my goodness. We gotta establish those clear boundaries and communicate openly needs and concerns. Like just be straightforward with each other. Traumatic events, work with a therapist or a counselor to process and heal that trauma. Engage in mindfulness, art, exercise, all of those things work and help. And lastly, we have the physical triggers which are of course like the physical utilities, your electricity, your you have uh, how your sound system is in your house. Sensory overload, identify and minimize exposure to overwhelming sensory inputs. Create a sensory friendly environment at home and work. You have your touch, set and communicate personal boundaries, those boundaries regarding physical comfort Physical contact, seek professional help if touch triggers are related to past traumas. And I know a couple people that that has happened to. The pain, consult healthcare providers for effective pain management strategies. You want to alleviate that discomfort. And you sometimes it is the stretching you need. You need yoga to get that out. The fatigue, you always want to prioritize your sleep, your rest. Manage your energy levels through balanced nutrition. Get in regular exercise. Your health is your wealth. I cannot stress that enough. And work, figure out what stress management techniques really work for you. What, what helps you get through when you need to get through and work out that stress that you have. All right. Now we navigated through our mental house. We inspected each room for the triggers that challenge its integrity. Like architects, we've identified the key areas that need renovation. We have the emotional weatherproofing. We have the boundary fences of our social. We have the environmental maintenance, the outside of our house. We have our personal interior renovations. And then we have the physical repairs, which you want to make sure that you ain't got no, no, the electricity in your house is good. It's working. These strategies that I shared are derived from our, from my, my exploration and the tools are the blueprint we employ to fortify our mental house against elements of triggers. They're not mere concepts, but practical, actionable plans ready to be implemented to enhance the resilience and functionality of your mental abode. So as we conclude, we wanna remember that each trigger management managed and each strategy applied is a step toward reinforcing the structure of our self-awareness, which is your foundation. We unlocking room after room by tapping into our potential and with, within our mental house. So let's carry forward these structural plans of self-awareness transforming every trigger encounter into an opportunity for growth and truly realizing the expansive potential that resides within us all. I want to thank you all for embarking on my constructive journey today. May the blueprints we've drawn and the tools we've gathered inspire you to continuously renovate and elevate your mental house to its fullest potential. Elevate your life one air cycle at a time. Thank you so much, you all. I appreciate you for coming. Thank you. Absolutely amazing, Angela.
Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Right on time for me tonight. Right on time for me Thank tonight. You, Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any questions for Angela? Let's give her her flowers. Any comments? Yes. Powerful. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank wonderful. you, Angela. That was yes. very powerful. Yes. 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 Good. Congratulations. Right. Even That's coming in late, it was good. Yes, it was needed. I have, a, I have a comment, a statement, Angela. I just want to say that I really like how you connected your, you know, your personal life with your presentation, how everything just, you know, you gave the examples and, you know, you were very explicit and it was easier for us to visualize, you know, what you were explaining when you were talking about, you know, what happens with, you know, taking care of your son, for example, and, you know, and things like that. So it was really, really uh, informative. And very there, is, there is one question in the chat for you. I Andy. see that. Do you have tips on how to communicate when you are triggered? Um, for me, like when I was triggered in the hospital, it 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 starts with a breathing for me. And I have to I, I assess everything. Okay. So it was like, okay, everybody is talking. I could see she was first, I could see she was getting upset. So as she, as the nurse was getting upset because she knows I'm the point of contact. So she, but she wants, she knows that this is his daughter and this is his son, but I'm the granddaughter. So she's trying to re be respectful of everybody. So once that trigger set in of they're, they're just going at her. And, and when, when my family gets in, everybody's talking at the same time at one person. So you got three people talking at you at the same time. So I just turned and I looked at her and I took a deep breath and which is, which usually helps me. And I looked at her and I told her, I said, give me one second. And I looked at them and I said, okay, guys, I just want y'all to, it's just staying calm, getting together, assessing, okay, this situation calls for me explaining to them that I have been here every day since he came here. I've talked to the doctors every day since he came here, explaining this, how the process goes with getting the medication. We all know he's in pain. So it's just, it's just assessing, like doing the air, the air method, assess it, assess the situation. Is there a way that you can be here? You know, it's, can you guys go on mute? Whoever that is, can you go on mute? I don't know who that oh. is. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> so that's what I would say. It's just tips on it is just to stay calm, assess the situation, really understand how can you make it understandable? Because that's my main thing is how can I make this clear clearly to you without sounding too teachy, too, because I can get to where I, I will I will do the finger like Dr. Shell says don't do. <laughs> well, we, we have... Uh... Uh, Carol has her hand up and then Stavetta. Better. Hello, Ms. Carol. Hi. Um, thank you. This was such a powerful presentation. And I just wanted to just reiterate that how valuable that first chart was to to really helping you to to figure out what's going on with you. Because I, I have a, a checklist that I have for parents and I tell them to put it in their uh, kitchen cabinet about something, about tips for dealing with behavior, like quick tips for uh, common behaviors that the children have. Like mm -hmm. I actually envision that what you have here as being similar to that because I have not gotten, I have not gotten things done today. And there was one particular task that I wanted to do. And obviously we hadn't had the class yet. I did eventually get around to it that you're anxious. You don't really want to do this. And you're doing everything. I'm looking at March Madness scores, looking at uh, press conferences, you know, Dawn Staley and everybody. I'm doing everything but what I was supposed to do today. And so, um, but that check, but that that sheet you had there, you can just kind of read down it and and find it. And that can really help because then you can get to the strategies that you provided. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Right, Fabulous. Oh, uh, and I, oh, you can go. I, I don't mind waiting. My hand oh, is raised. You want to go? Hand up, Mimi. I'm sorry. I thought it was uh, Stavetta. No, I didn't have my hand up. I didn't. I just broke in. <laughs> go ahead, Mimi.
Um, I, I just wanted to say, Angela, um, you 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 really provided um, uh, such a thorough uh, a, a listing, and it was really rich uh, in information. And it, it, I wanted to just add um, just a, a, a little bit. I, I, I used to work a little as a mediator. And um, I was just going to add to um, some of the um, information that you shared. It's, it's also that you have to do a check-in. So if you think beforehand of something that could be triggering, envision beforehand how how you know you would ha uh handle that situation if you already know uh oh i see i'm i'm freezing a little here but um try to think beforehand how how you would handle the situation and i could even suggest that you uh set your phone or watch certain times of the day and just do a check in because maybe it, it's something going on at work and we can keep going and not even realize that we are triggered. You you don't you don't even know it's just like huh, just another day at work or or you know, you just keep moving in life. We just keep going, we keep going. And you know, you have, you would hear the uh, phrase the bag lady, you know, you're carrying all this, but you don't even re realize it. And uh, I think Jamie said uh about uh, being overwhelmed, like you don't even realize, like, am I overwhelmed? So I would say set um, set your watch or something, the time, you know, lunchtime, seven o'clock, whatever, and just do a little check-in. How am I really feeling? So that was all. It was great, Angela. Thank you so much, Mimi. All right, Miss Devetta. Hi. I love your presentation. I'm mad at myself because I was trying to get logged in and I couldn't find it. So I missed it by 10 minutes, but I'm not going to take time for that. I wanted to offer everyone a resource. In addition to doing everything at GSU, I am reading this book. You can see it's called With Winning in Mind. The guy's name is called Lanny Basham. It's not going to come up because I got the, I got GSU background on, but it, it speaks to what you were talking about tonight. And I just wanted to offer that as a, an additional resource he comes at it from the standpoint of view as an Olympic winner, gold medalist for many years and training other people, but it's a mental management system. He talks about a broad amount of things. I just think that it would be something that would be wonderful to add to um, what you are already doing and what you already have, but it may give additional language to people. Can you type that in a, the chat so I can save it? You sure? I sure enough was. Well. Oh, there it is. Dr. Tomoji already. Well, that's her book. No, that's I a different one. Type that in the chat so I can, and I'll go click on Dr. Tamuji's link too. Yes, with. Thank you so, so much. So that was it. Yeah, no, I was, I was like, oh, that might be an additional resource that folks yeah. could have in addition to, because it, I think it just would fit exactly with what you're saying. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I think I would love to take a picture of everyone. So if everyone can come off their camera, please do. I mean, off of, um, turn on their cameras, please do. Um, so I'm going to take a picture. One, two, three, cheese. All right. Awesome. Done. Thank you. Yay. Why did I smile and didn't take my camera off? Okay. Yeah. Adelina, did you take both pages? Uh, there's only one page, I think. No, I have two pages. If you I have one. Yeah. I have one. Mm -hmm. I have one page, too. 33 yeah. people on one page. Let me see. One, two, three, That's what four, I have, five. Right. Maybe yeah. it's yeah. our, maybe That's it's our view because because I have two and Naomi has two and I saw a couple other people hold their moment. I have two too. Okay. I have, one. I have all 33 people on one page. Okay, yeah. cool. And when, and when you finish this, I'll jump in with a comment. I am done. Oh, okay. I, I guess I wasn't going to be smiling. Enough. Hey. Okay, no, yeah. no, no, no. You want me to do it again with a smile? No, no, I don't. No, it's okay. First of all, can I just celebrate? Okay, let me let me do this in order. Can we just again, once again, just take yourselves off mute for a minute and then go right back on mute and just celebrate Angela and how amazing that 
That's called GS you love right there. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just so obvious that you put time, energy, and effort into the session. And I love that. The preparation. That's what we talk about in GSU. Plan, prepare, practice. And so I we can see your growth. Uh, we can see that you're tapping into additional resources to really expand the AIR method and how it impacts us. As somebody else mentioned, I love how you're bringing in your personal experiences into the content. Uh, but it's just the my my gratitude and appreciation for the level of preparation that I know that you're doing to come and deliver such a phenomenal session. So, and that's to all of the team leaders, like the GSU team leaders and elite team leaders have been showing up and showing out you can see that they're putting time, energy, and effort into every session. So I celebrate Angela. I celebrate every team leader, every team, every elite team leader. And can I just celebrate?